Hello, my name is Peter Hay, and I'm the pastor at the uh, United Methodist Church that meets in Wilmington, Massachusetts, and here I am in the church sanctuary. And with me today is uh, Kim Gould. Kim is uh, her final Sunday with us here in the life of our church, and in a few moments, Kim will offer the, the message for the day. But uh, it's good to be together as we worship our God. I invite us now to be attentive to one of our lay leaders, uh, Jenny Hipple, as she leads us in our opening prayer. Welcome. We're glad that you are worshiping with us. We'll begin our time together in prayer. Won't you please join me? Summer God, you dance in on golden sunbeams, like soil that must be plowed or turned over so must I prepare to receive your warmth and the planting of your message in my heart. Open me to receiving the seed of hope and the promise of growth. Plant your spirit deep within me and make my life fruitful and bountiful. Amen. And now let us join in singing the hymn, Help Us Accept Each Other. Farnsworth, one of the lay leaders here at church, and I'll be sharing the children's message this week. We're going to be reading the book called Why Noah Chose the Dove, written by Isaac Singer and illustrated by one of my favorite children's book illustrators, Eric Carl. The animals gathered around Noah's ark. Noah was a righteous man, and God had told him how to save himself and his family by building an ark that would float and shelter them when the waters rose over the earth. The animals had heard a rumor that Noah was to take with him on the ark only the best of all the living creatures. So the animals came and vied with one another, each boasting about its own merits and whenever possible, belittling the merits of others. The lion roared, I am the strongest of all the beasts, and I surely must be saved. The elephant trumpeted, I am the largest, 
I have the longest trunk, the biggest ears, and the heaviest feet. To be big and heavy is not so important, Yip the fox. I, the fox, am the cleverest of them all. What about me, brayed the donkey? I thought I was the cleverest. It seems anyone can be clever, Yip the skunk. I smell the best of all the animals. My perfume is surely very famous. you scramble over the earth, but I'm the only one that can climb trees, shrieked the monkey. The only one, growled the bear. What do you think I do? And how about me, chattered the squirrel indignantly. I belong to the tiger family, purred the cat. I'm a cousin of the elephant, squeaked the little mouse. I'm just as strong as the lion, scowled the tiger, and I have the most beautiful fur. My spots are more admired than your stripes, the leopard shot back. I am man's closest friend, yelped the dog. You're no friend. You're just a fawning flatterer, brayed the wolf. I am proud. I'm a lone wolf, and I flatter no one. Bah, bleated the sheep. That's why you are always hungry. Give nothing, get nothing. I give my wool to man, and he takes good care of me. You give man wool, but I give him sweet honey, droned the bee. Besides, I have venom to protect me from my enemies. What is your venom compared with mine, rattled the snake. And I am closer to Mother Earth than any of you other animals. Not as close as I am, protested the earthworm, sticking his head out of the ground. I lay eggs, clucked the hen. I give milk, mooed the cow. I help man plow the earth said the ox. I carry man, neighed the horse, and I have the largest eyes of all. You have the largest eyes, but you only have two eyes. While I have many, the housefly buzzed right in the horse's ear. Compared with me, you're all midgets. The giraffe's words came from a distance as he nibbled the leaves off the top of a tree. I am almost as tall as you are, chortled the camel, and I can travel in the desert for days and days without food or water. You two are tall, but I'm fat, snorted the hippopotamus, and I'm pretty sure that my mouth is bigger than anybody else's. Don't be so sure, snapped the crocodile as he yawned. I can speak like a human, squawked the parrot. You don't really speak, you just imitate, the rooster crowed. I know only one word. Cockadoodle do, but it is my word. I see with my ears, I fly by hearing, piped the bat. I sing with my wings, chirped the cricket. There were many more creatures who were eager to praise themselves, but Noah had noticed that the dove was perched alone on a branch and did not try to speak and compare herself with the other animals. Why are you silent? Noah asked the dove. Don't you have anything to boast about? I don't think of myself as better or wiser or more attractive than the other animals, cooed the dove. Each one of us has something the other doesn't have, given to us by God who created us all. The dove is right, Noah said. There is no need to boast and compete with one another. God has ordered me to take creatures of all kinds on the ark, cattle and beast, bird and insect, 
There is room for all. The animals were overjoyed when they heard these words, and all their grudges were soon forgotten. Before Noah opened the door of the ark, he said, I love all of you, but because the dove remained modest and silent while the rest of you bragged and argued, I choose it to be my messenger. Noah kept his word. When the rain stopped, he sent the dove to fly over the world and bring back news of how things were. At last, she returned with an olive leaf in her beak, and Noah knew that the waters had receded. When the land finally became dry, Noah and his family and all the animals left the ark. After the flood, God promised that never again would he destroy the earth because of man's sins, and that seed, time, and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night would never cease. The truth is that there are in the world more doves than there are tigers, leopards, wolves, vultures, and other ferocious beasts. The dove lives happily without fighting. The dove is the bird of peace. So as we move on to the scripture lesson, see if you can find some similarities in the story between what we read today and the verses that will be read by Ginny shortly. Our first scripture reading today comes from the New Testament, the Gospel of Matthew, the 10th chapter, verses 40 through 42. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet because he is a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives to one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. Our second scripture passage today comes from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, chapter 28, verses five through nine. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah the prophet in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen, may the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words which you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet hear now this word which I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. <clears throat> Special Music 584, Lord, you give the Great Commission. <coughs> Lord, you call us to yourself. 
name is Pastor Kim Gold. I'm currently appointed at the North Andover United Methodist Church, and I come to you today as not only clergy, but the youth coordinator here at Wilmington United Methodist Church. I've been blessed to be part of this wonderful church family for well over 20 years, and during that time, I have been blessed to be in the position within this church of leading various ministries of welcoming worship, youth education, outreach, and others. So I ask your grace and mercy as I share the word that has been, that will be preached today. And I thank you for the love and support that I have received within these walls and with your fit, with you, my church family. Thank you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you come to us and we hear you and receive you in so many various ways. So we ask you today, Lord, to open our ears and our hearts to hear the word that you desire us to hear. Move in us and encourage us to be the action in your world and to be part of the life and love that you desire to have recognized within us around us and through us. In Jesus' loving name, amen. <sighs> so, how has your social distancing been? Months ago when all this craziness started, I would ask people that question, you know, somewhat in jest and somewhat lightheartedly. And for the most part, it was met with reactions of the same. But as time has gone on and people have become weary of staying at home and staying distanced and staying masked, the response has changed. So with that change, I have changed the question. Now, instead of asking how is your social distancing, people I bump into or approach from six foot away, I'll ask them, how can I help? How can I help? How can I help is reaching out as a means of support during this weird and challenging time. It is a recognition of my desire to connect and perhaps your desire to respond. How can I help? So now, as we are months into this process and in some ways we're looking to be beyond it, conversations are beginning about opening our businesses and our, and our churches. How can we do that? How can we come together again as a worshiping community? Those preparations that are underway help us to determine how we can just get on with being church. Now, I know the plans that we're making up in North Andover may be a little different than the procedures and ideas going on here at Wilmington, but they're happening nonetheless. And the thing is, the desire to be in worship together and the feeling to be part of a worshiping community is not just a desire to be out of the house. It is a desire to be in the presence of people who I am sure will be glad to see me and I will be glad to see them. That will make us happy. And I'm hoping that in all things that we do for the good of God, it will make God happy as well. When we come together to pray and to worship and to sing those, sing those praises to him, even though we won't be singing, our hope is that it makes God happy as well. As we gather together, the opportunity to see each other face to face, it's a blessing that we encourage and we look forward to. The most important thing about seeing and experiencing being in a place together 
is the fact that we do get to see one another. That sharing our experiences and passing the peace will be something that not only warms and fills our hearts, but that of for those others that we experience it as well. Now, passing the peace here in Wilmington has always been an exercise in uh, loudness and laughter and joy, hugs, handshakes, and perhaps even going on a little too long. But in that opportunity to greet someone and share a moment, we are able to say, I see you, I know you, I recognize you. So recognizing and seeing and experiencing other people in our midst is something that we just cannot wait to be part of. And the thing is, especially since we have been covered halfway up with face masks, we seek to be recognized, and so does everyone else. So in our preparations in North Andover, we've come to the conclusion that instead of the traditional passing of the peace and extending a hand, a handshake or a high five, our contactless greeting will be that of namaste. Now many of you already know this greeting. It's a traditional spiritual Indian greeting of respect and recognition. Essentially, it says, the God that is present within me recognizes the God that is present within you. Hmm. What a beautiful feeling. In our desire to connect, to be in relationship with one another, we long to, for that recognition. But it has been more difficult in our separateness to have that kind of recognition. In our collective distance, it has been more difficult to understand what is going on in the world. In some ways, we have been in exile. Our reading today from the Old Testament prophet of Jeremiah, we hear that for the exiles in Babylon, it's difficult. It's very difficult. In being separated from their home and community and their faith traditions, it has been very painful and difficult. And in that, false prophets have stepped up, thinking they're filling the void. False prophets were trying to sway the conversation. But Jeremiah, he spoke the truth. The truth that the judgment to Babylon has been that they've created a place and a time and that though being in exile, they had the opportunity to consider just what it was that they were being told and how they should respond to God's call in their lives. They maybe have their own feelings of abandonment, thinking that God has left them on their own. And they've begun to listen to things that are not of God. In our COVID exile and quarantine, we have also begun to hear words not of God. Angry, deceptive, and dangerous voices. But no, there are still prophets speaking for the good of God. When the anxiety and pain of COVID created an atmosphere that fine-tuned and examined closely the inequity 
the difficulty, the pain that our black brothers and sisters have experienced through the systematic oppression over centuries, they've reached the breaking point and I don't blame them. Just how much should a people withstand? And in the face of such injustice, what has been our response to God present in their tears, their pain, the death that we in no way can justify or look away from? While we were watching, what is God recognizing in us? What is God seeing as our response? Jesus did not come into the world to declare a status quo. No, he did not. Jesus came into this world to declare rescue. Jesus came to all the people of all the world to declare life. And Jesus came to us so that the call to us is a call to action. We've been challenged. Knowing Christ is called, has called us into his ministry of not only seeing and recognizing that God is present in each and every one of God's humanity, all the people around us, and, but God is also here within us and through us and between us and is calling us for us to do our part for the work of God's love for someone else. Jesus says in that scripture today of Matthew, he says, anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. Jesus says, anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one that sent me. And whoever welcomes a prophet, one speaking on God's behalf, will be received as a prophet and receive your prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, the ones following Christ, the ones of us who are reaching out to the community, the ones who are displaying God's love, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. A cup of cold water seems like such an easy thing to do. A cup of cold water, a response that provides eternal reward. Eternal reward offered through Jesus Christ. The simplicity of the task to offer a simple drink of water describes for me the difficulty of such that such task because that's hospitality you know hospitality will you welcome and share with one another to make people feel comfortable and part of what's going on around them hospitality I call it difficult because sometimes it can be difficult to make it happen. Sometimes the easiest of tasks are met with the response of, we can't even be bothered with the simple response. Sometimes what is the easiest thing to do is also the thing that we walk away from most easily. Because if it's that easy, why can't they do it for themselves? 
It's so easy, anyone can do that. If I do what, if I do it, if I offer, if I provide, if I encourage, what will they want from me next? There's a very easy way to learn about hospitality. And honestly, I see it as Christian hospitality. There is a children's book, a very simple story. If you give a mouse a cookie, that cute little storybook, if you're not familiar, details how if you give a mouse a cookie, he'll then ask for a cup of milk. And if you give him a cup of milk, he'll want a straw to drink it with. The progression of those requests become more and more complicated and more and more messy and more and more prolonged as the story goes on. The simple gesture of giving a cookie to a mouse opened up in this children's book all kinds of unexpected results. But it's hospitality. It's Christian hospitality. Welcoming someone through the most simple of gestures makes way for an interaction and result in what may become another request. Oh my, he had a cookie, now he wants milk. Oh goodness, what other requests will there be? What other interaction will be required? What kind of mess will this cause? But the result, unlike the children's story for us, this story, an idea of Christian hospitality, opens up possibilities. The possibility to share the gospel, to spread the word, and to change a life. To provide time and space. An opportunity for someone who may desire to recognize God and might actually experience that for themselves. My friends, my church family, who I love, in the name of Jesus Christ, might we not begin with a simple gesture? It might start with just recognition of presence and hospitality. But it will rarely end there. If allowing the gestures of welcome to create, welcome to create at the simplest what might be a cup of water as an action and offering, if we do just the cup of water, we are not fulfilling our response and responsibility to Jesus. In our attitude and action of hospitality, our welcome to all, whoever they are, and whatever they look like, and wherever they may come from, and how they may sound, how they communicate, is just the beginning of how we will be measured by God. How we share God's love is measurable. I ask you, does opening a door to inclusion and acceptance of identity exhibited by a person or a group void our inclusion in God's kingdom? Let me say that again. If our actions provide comfort and hope and love to someone who is not feeling that, is that such an inconvenience to us that we are willing 
to say no thank you to God? Perhaps we need to change the question. And the question could be from, do I see inclusion or another kind of exclusion of myself if I allow others to be present in my walk of faith? Do you? The work of justice Welcome and inclusion has been a long struggle by anyone not of the group in power. And the often quoted statement by Martin, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, the arc of mo the moral universe is long, and we've heard it before. It ends by saying it bends toward justice. If that arc of the moral universe is long and it does bend toward justice, justice, do we need to prolong it any further? Hasn't it been long enough? How can we help? Of course, we know the help is the love of God provided to us in the form of Jesus Christ, who came to save us all. So I'd like to remind the Wilmington United Methodist Church and its confirmation class of 2020, who knows more than any other that the expectations and routine of growing in their faith is unique in its outward appearance, more unique than those who have come before and probably the, of those who will follow. But the essence and the deep truth is that in your walk of faith, you have come to be recognized and recognize God in yourself and in others. So I leave you with two things, a challenge and a celebration. I challenge you to recognize the love of God that is present in you so that you may provide that love and hospitality to someone else who may not know that love as clearly. And the celebration, of course, is that God has placed in you that recognition. The expectation that you will grow in the desire and action to be active in God's redemptive love of Jesus Christ. This congregation, the Wilmington United Methodist Church, and all who are here will provide what will be the cup of cold water, the cookie, the straw, and all the other needs that you need to create in you opportunities for your growth. May God continue to bless you and move in openness, welcoming and reconciling love. I thank God for you and the Christ that is within you. Amen. Well, we're not able to pass the offering plate through the sanctuary as we typically do during the worship service, but there are at least three ways that you can continue to support the work of the church through this virtual time of virtual worship. You can uh, go on our website and you can make your contributions online that way. Just follow the prompts and it will make it relatively easy for you. You can go to your bank if you'd like and work out a reoccurring gift and that some people find that much more convenient. And you can always mail us a check if you'd like to send it into the church office. We would be uh, quite grateful to receive it. And the gifts that you give are very important for us to remain vital in our ministry for the sake of Jesus Christ in the world. Special Music 2089, Wild and Blown the Prophet's Wood. <clears throat> <clears throat>
time of prayer, I'd like to do something just a little different and uh, ask him if he would come forward. And uh, I now have an opportunity on video to say what a privilege it has been to uh, work with you this past year. I've so appreciated your energy and your creativity and your spirit and uh, your deep, deep concern for so many people who are hurting. And uh, I am uh, I just know that you're going to have a wonderful ministry in North Andover. You've already been there for a year, and, uh, and God will do great things with you. And so uh, I'd like to offer us now uh, a time of prayer. Oh God, we give you thanks for our sister Kim. We know that we've been together for a season when this church has been a home that we've shared together. We have lived and we have laughed and we have served you. And now we trust that your future calls us in different ways, but that your love and your goodness and your grace will always be with us. We give you thanks for Kim and pray your blessing upon her in her journey. And we pray this in Christ's strong name. And as he taught, so now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at your baptism, acknowledge what God is doing, in the, doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. And now I'd like the mentors to uh, each uh, introduce their countryman and read the statement of faith that you, you worked out together. So. Uh, and Jake's uh, 
statement of faith is, I believe God is the one true God who guides me. I believe the church is here to provide me a place to worship and to give back to missions. I will continue to have this faith in God and worship. Jake, would you stand? We bid you welcome. Ben? Hi, my name is Bill. I am not only had the pleasure of being Ben's mentor, but I'm also one of the class teachers. And Ben's statement of faith is, I believe God tries to help everyone. I believe our church is a place people can go for guidance in their lives. And as a member, I will continue to go on mission trips. Ben, would you stand? Hannah's mentor? <laughs> I'd like to introduce Hannah J. Bryson. And her faith statement is as follows. Life isn't always easy. Obstacles are thrown in our way. Not always do we see the truth, but don't get thrown astray. God is always listening. He's watching and he cares. Once we had our christening, now God, hear our prayers. On the way, on the day we get confirmed, part of the church we become. It's our choice to become reaffirmed, and I am happy to succumb to your ways and presence to the church, but more than that, Jesus has done my penance. I will try hard, in fact, to be more like him, to make the church proud, and sing loud all your hymns. My bond with God will become profound. The church is more than a group or a place. They are all family, and I will embrace them while, with a smile. Happily, God, I will do my best and make all others glad. Every day will be a test, but my promise is ironclad. Hannah, would you please stand? I was mentor for Kara Rice. Um, Kara made an acronym, keeping my faith in God, educating others about the church and God. I believe that the church allows me to be closer to God, reach out to people in need, and always with me. Thank you. Maddie? Okay, oh, yeah. Kara, would you please stand? <laughs> Maddie? I am mentor for Madison Hammond, and her faith statement is, I believe that God accepts and cares about everyone. I believe that the church is a community that gives back to the world around it. I will give back to my community and be respectful of all. Maddie, would you please stand? Would you please stand? Now I'd like each confirmand to stand, and we will ask you the questions that uh, were first put to your parents on the day that you were baptized. And they made these promises on your behalf, and now on this day, as you hear them, uh, 
you affirm them for yourselves, and you confirm the promise that was made for you at your baptism. So would you please stand? And remain, just stand right where you are. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you now, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? And if you do, please say, I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and the power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they may present themselves? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. And if you do, please say, I do. According to the grace God has given to you, Will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, say, I will. And now I would ask the mentors to please stand. Will you who have sponsored these persons through their confirmation process continue to support them and encourage them in their Christian life? And if you do, if you will, please say, I will. And this is for the congregation. Do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ, if so, say, we do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these youth now before you in your care? And on your behalf, I say, with God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround them and a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We, the congregation and the church, will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Just mischievous enough. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. I'd ask you and your family to come forward now. Benjamin William Wright, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hannah J. Bryson.
Anna J. Bryson, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Christina Chesbrough. Christina Chesbrough, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Madison Jane Hammond. Madison Jane Hammond, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Jake Metcalf, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live a faith, as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Kira Alexa Rice. Kira Alexa Rice, the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now it is our joy to welcome our new sisters and brothers in Christ. For through baptism, they are incorporated in by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in the royal Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and with thanksgiving, we welcome you in to the family of Christ. And also as members of the body of Christ, we now welcome you into the fellowship of the United Methodist Church. Members of the household of God, I speak to you, the congregation of the United Methodist Church here in Wilmington. I commend these persons to your love and care, and do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And on your behalf, I say these words, we give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love, that members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And now may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. I'd like now to invite uh, one of our lay leaders, Denise Farnsworth, to come and share. Denise? Good 
evening. I wanted to welcome all of our new confirmands to the church, Ben and Jake and Hannah and Kira and Maddie and Christina. I hope I didn't miss anybody. Um, on behalf of the education committee, we have some gift boxes for you, and you will find your gift with the United Methodist uh, cross and flame in there. You will also find a sand dollar, as it is our tradition here at church. We usually give the confirmand something from the beach, either a washed uh, beach stone that's been tumbled by the waves, or a sand dollar. And this year, your teacher Sam said, do the sand dollars. So all of these were collected from Wingersheet Beach. The sand dollars filter the sand, so their colors are the colors of the sand of the beach. So Wingersheet has some white sand and some gray sand, sometimes some purple sand. So you'll find that each one has a different color to them. And they are in your gift boxes. So the legend of the sand dollar does have a story behind the Christian faith. There is a five-point star in the center is to represent the North Star that was over the manger when Jesus was born. There is an Easter lily shape that represents Christ's resurrection. Its Florida cousin has a slit, has five, a couple of slits in the sand dollar that represents the stab wound in Jesus' side. And um, if you break over any of these, you will find the doves of the Holy Spirit inside. So they are delicate, they are amazing that they survive on the beach, um, but we wanted to give them to you to honor this milestone in your faith. If one of yours breaks and you need a new one, you can look for those uh, doves of peace or you can find me. Um, there are also some for the mentors. We appreciate all that the mentors have done this year and the teachers have done and our clergy have done for the confirmation class. So congratulations all on behalf of the Education Committee here at Wilmington United Methodist Church. Thank you. Within these boxes are a couple other items that uh, have significance um, to not only the church, but we hope to you. One is a copy of the Wesleyan Covenant Prayer, and it's a good way to meditate on how we are connected not only to each other through our Methodist tradition, but also how we can live a, a good and full and rich life in our faith. Another item in this box is something sweet. We cannot have our cake and coffee hour and celebration together, but you will find some hugs and kisses in this box that are meant just for you. Another item in here is something that we hope will help you remember and carry your faith with you. It is a, a cross and flame pendant that we hope that you will wear proudly and uh, it is given to you from the congregation with love. And last but not least, from your confirmation teachers, where they recognize that prayer is such an important part of a life of faith, in this box is a olive wood prayer cross that you can hold in your hand and you can find that it's a source of comfort and ha help you find strength in your life of prayer. And it's something small enough to carry in your pocket, but large enough to grasp onto and know you're holding onto something true and strong and wonderful. So those are the gifts for you, and uh, we pray that you will not only enjoy them, but find strength and hope and recognize the love that this congregation has for you as you go forward in your walk of faith. So I just wanted to take a second and say how much fun and what a great class this has been. Um, Sam's not here because the only thing that would keep Sam from here is if somebody was in need of her help at the hospital. And so she was ready to leave and they made her stay. So she was devastated. <coughs> she was devastated that she couldn't spend time with you guys, but she wanted you to know that she loves you and she's gonna look forward to seeing you as young adults in the church. Because I know we're gonna see you guys more. So that's, that's a definite. So thank you guys for such a great year. And a special word of thanks to both you and Sam for the wonderful work you did as teaching and uh, loving and caring for our children in the way that you did. What's up? 
Take a look at that. Well, I thank you for coming, and I thank you for your taking the time to learn about the Christian faith and to making the decision to follow Jesus Christ as you live the rest of your lives. May you be blessed, may you be encouraged, and I'm excited to share the journey with you. I invite us now to go in peace, to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. education um, I have put together a little something for you mm -hmm. and I have known Kim since she was a parent in youth group with her daughter Melissa and have watched her just 
move through our church. Yep. <laughs> I don't know what position she was in when I walked into the office one day after I got out of work around 3, 4 o'clock and saw Kim there and said, what are you doing here? You should be at work over at Charles River. And she said, my position was eliminated. I was very upset and we had a very nice talk and we said, well, God has some plans for you. Mm -hmm. And so those plans went from, and I don't know what the official name is, but probably I think lay pastor here, where she were able to do communion, you filled in for Travis on a week of vacation and officiated two weddings and a funeral, I think, <laughs> and has been running ever since. <laughs> and um, these are t-shirts oh, awesome. from mission trips. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. Woo! Bam, bam. Oh, oh, wow. And all sorts of colorful things. We you know <laughs> that Kim is colorful. wasn't in the middle of worship. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It might get in there. <laughs> you have us. I think it will now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You'll forever have us all wrapped around you. And now I'd like to invite Kim to give us the, the final blessing on this service. Kim, if you'd be so kind. In recognizing that over the years I have been uh, blessed to be able to hang crepe paper and paper chains, flock your yards with flamingos, take your children to different places far away and help them see God. I ask that God bless us and keep us all and that today and every day you may be able to see and recognize the God within you, and see and recognize the God within others. In the name of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Namaste. Mm -hmm.